I didn't get this review up in time because when it came out, I had family over. And if you think I'm going to choose any TV show over my family, then you're just fucking crazy. As such, I wasn't going to do this video, but then the last few minutes of this episode happened, and by golly gosh, do I have words for this. Overall, the episode is just fine. I mean, that's it. It's not abhorrent. It's not jaw-dropping. It's just, eh. I quite like the first bit, because Mercury and Tyrion are two villains I feel I've been the least ruined. In fact, I feel Tyrion is just as good as ever, and his tail looks freaking cool. I really just like seeing Mercury and Emerald interacting, so I like this. I like Mercury's characterization. I like Tyrion. I guess I can say I like Watts, but he really didn't do anything at all. This scene is just... Yes, it's the best scene of the episode. I don't even like Emerald. I enjoyed her in this scene, though. Also, Mercury's symbols are stolen. Funny how an assassin's semblance is that of a thief. Right. On the other hand, I love that Mercury doesn't have a semblance because he reminds me of Batman, but evil. So I guess, I guess that's just Owlman, but with guns on his feet. So Owlman Bayonetta. <laughs> then the next scene. Oh, great. First off, the giant Pierce statue actually got me laughing, because it's just like, oh, this is here, funny nobody noticed that. Then there's this ghost woman who's totally not related to Pyrrha in any way, but she has red hair, so I like her. Honestly, I think I would have been a lot sadder if this wasn't a big statue of Pyrrha, but like, it was just a small little thing on the floor. Because like, it's a, it's a lot more tragic when a, a hero who did so much was just not recognized. It was just like a wall of people, and John just looked at all the people who, who he lost, or that were just lost, and then he just saw Pyrrha as just like this footnote. However, I am bothered by the fact that, I mean, it is just more John grieving. I mean, Nora and Ren show up, and instead of doing something like actually showing that Nora and Ren gave two shits about this girl they almost never interacted with, they have them talk to John, because John is our special snowflake, and he's the only one allowed to grieve. Oh, but not grieve too much, because it makes Ren and Nora sad. On the upside, though, Ren saying this stuff is hilarious, because his voice acting is so deadpan, which I can't even complain about, because it's pretty consistent with his characterization, and even semblance. I mean, he is literally a walking monotone. But then the heroes get back home, where Oscar is inside in his new outfit. On one hand, thank fuck he's no longer in that other attire. On the other hand, I just hate that colour. I mean, at least this use of it. I'm sure some uses of it would look great. This just reminds me of Victorian from Transformers, and she she's fucking ugly. Then all the characters zoom in and body slam him. Obviously, they want him dead as much as I do, but they fail, and they try to pass it off as caring. This would have actually been funny if... I mean, if it was funny. And if I gave three shakes of a lamb's asshole about Oscar... So John apologizes, no shit, big shock. Oscar says more stuff that puts me to sleep. And then John comes up with a plan to steal. Weiss says that stealing is worse than breaking the law. But I'm pretty sure that's that's still breaking the law. And nobody cares about your opinion anyway. I mean, Crow's being realistic here, like, We can't fucking kill Salem. What do you think we can do? Even if we trap her eons later, she'll just get free eventually and destroy the world then. Ruby's all like, we don't need no adult, we're the cool kids, we're unstoppable. It's like, am I on Crow's side because he realizes this is pointless and nobody remembers that the God of Light had a pool? Well, it's probably still there if the God of Darkness's pool is still there. Or am I on Ruby's side because she remembers they have plot armor? They try to make Ruby out to be like she's changing by going against her uncle, but I mean... No, she's just acting like she always does. She's doing these things because she wants to do it in her attempts to save the world. So she's just so static. Bland, boring, one note character that over the course of 75 episodes, more than most of my favorite anime, in fact, more than just one of my top 10 anime, she is just not changed in one bit. We see how Philia develop more. No, no, no. Freaking Natsu Drag Needle and Black Rock Shooter develop more. And they're meant to be one note to fit the tone of their shows. Ruby is one of the most boring protagonists of all time. I mean, it honestly sucks because at this point, the only characters I enjoy on screen are Maria and. Oh my god, that's it. I mean, not counting villains, who I just like anyway, because I find villains and their motivations to be incredibly interesting from a psychological standpoint. Out of the heroes, I don't like Ruby, I stop caring about Weiss, I don't like Blake, I don't like Yang, I don't like John. I'm indifferent to Nora, I don't care about Ren, and I don't enjoy any crow scenes, and I fucking despise Oscar. You know, it's funny, because, like, I recently watched Slender Man and The Nun, and they're fucking catastrophically bad, so maybe I'm just giving this episode a pass for not being as bad by saying it's okay, but 
That's all I gotta say. Goodbye.